Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're going over my top five reasons why you should travel to Lofoten in winter. So hello and welcome back. If you're new to this channel, make sure you comment down below, say hi, like if you find this video useful, and then of course subscribe for future videos. On this channel, we mainly talk about film photography, travel, and then kind of just whatever I feel like talking about. So without further ado, let's get right into these five reasons. So first and foremost, it is a completely different landscape in winter. Like a lot of places, once winter hits, everything is covered in snow and it completely changes the landscape. Personally, I have been to Lofoten both in summer and in winter, and I can say without a doubt that winter is by far my favorite of the two. The mountains are covered in snow, you have the rocks sticking out everywhere, you have the deep rich blues, it's a photographer's dream come true. You can still do a lot of hiking to see even better views, and of course there is the iconic fish racks that cover the island, and then that iconic smell of the fish racks as, as well. Number two is there are less tourists and less people, which right about now, that's kind of what you want. As a rule in general, during winter, people tend to travel to warmer climates, which means there are very few tourists in Lofoten during this time of year. Everywhere that we went, we only saw a handful and it was never any issues. We didn't have people getting in photos, or anything like that. So it really makes it much more enjoyable when you don't have to deal with that. Yes, some restaurants and accommodations do close during winter, but because there are few people on the island, it is not that big a deal and it's still relatively easy to find places to stay on the island. And then as far as the population goes, because of Lofoten's relatively small size, mountainous landscape and it's not too easy to get to via land it has kept the population relatively smaller so again if you're trying to get away from people this is a good place to start that brings us to number three which is winter activities you can take snowshoe tours you can go skiing you can go hiking you can take fishing tours you can get surfing lessons you can chase the northern lights or you can simply just drive up and down the island visiting all the small fishing villages and taking in the sites whatever the case there's plenty to do to keep you busy during winter in lofoten number four is going to be accessibility even though lofoten is located in the far north of norway because it is off the coast it is basically all coastal this keeps it at a relatively milder climate making it easy to access throughout the year and easy to travel on throughout the year as well. We drove up and down the island our entire trip there and we never had any issues in doing so. Whereas other places like maybe Iceland, throughout parts of the year a lot of major roads are closed because weather makes it unable for you to pass. Been there, done that. This also means that you can pretty much hike year round, but be sure to check the weather before your trip and leading up to your hike because certain areas are prone to avalanches depending on what the recent weather is. So make sure you do your due diligence and check that before you go on any hikes. Jack and I did our research. We took a nice three and a half hour long hike. And besides the snow being up to almost our knees, it was relatively enjoyable. And although I said it is rather difficult to get to Lofoten by land, if you want to, you can drive up further north and get on by car. I don't personally recommend this unless you have another reason to be up there anyways, just because to me personally, it seems to add unnecessary travel time. You can also fly onto the island. And then lastly, there is a ferry on the south end that you can take onto the island as well. For me, on both of my trips, I ended up taking the ferry. It's a little less expensive than the plane, and it's nice to just mix things up and not take a plane everywhere. Plus, once you factor in your time to travel to the airport, go through security, get on the plane, get to your destination, get your bags and get out, the amount of time you save taking the ferry versus flying over there, uh, it wasn't really enough to justify the cost for me personally. That brings us to my fifth and final point, which is that Lofoten is still relatively unexplored. Now, part of this, of course, is going to be the cost. Cost. Scandinavia in general is going to be more expensive than the rest of Europe. However, just like always, your biggest cost is going to be booking your transportation. Getting your plane tickets, your ferry, and then of course your rental car when you get there is going to be the primary bulk of your expenses. I do recommend getting a rental car just because public transportation there isn't extremely reliable. But once you do that, you can pretty much occupy all your time just driving up and down the island if that's all you want to do, and just taking hikes, saving your money there. And of course, you can get groceries and eat wherever you're staying. All the iconic photos of Lofoten you're going to see on places like Instagram are pretty much all taken on the lower half of Lofoten. Once you get past that, it's relatively unexplored and there's plenty of opportunity to find new places, try out new things, and explore places that haven't been overcrowded yet. So when we can all travel again, I highly recommend putting Lofoten near the top of your list for these reasons. So if you found this video useful, please make sure you hit that like button, comment down below, say hi, and then of course subscribe for future videos, and I will see you 
in the next one.